Bienvenidos, Ushamdi, and welcome CTS 231, Section 841 students for the second eight-week term of the fall 2017 semester at Anne Arundel Community College. This is the Networking 4, or the Connecting Networks V6 course from Cisco Networking Academy. And this afternoon's video tutorial and solution set is going to be on Packet Tracer Activity 2.1, dot 2.5, where we're actually going to be troubleshooting serial interfaces. And this is going to begin our conversation on WAN connectivity and specifically taking a look at the different types of serial connections, or I should say the different types of encapsulations that we're going to have on our serial connections. And so here's our activity over on the right hand side. We're going to be troubleshooting WAN connections for a local telco, in other words, the telephone company. And so this is, you can see it's kind of squished in here. This is telco. So the router up here, as we see in kind of our hub and spoke topology that we have, where we have the hub router, which is our telco router. And then off of that, we've got these spoke routers. And the reason that I say it's hub and spoke is because for any of the spokes to communicate with any other spokes, that communication will have to travel via the hub. Now, a quick physical inspection here uh, tells us right out of the gate that we've got some issues. We can see that on the first link on the outside here for both the left and the right hand side, we've got green dots and everything looks good, right? The green lights are flashing, everything's good to go. But here in the center, everything is red. So let's go ahead and dive in. It says diagnose and repair the cabling. Examine the addressing table to determine the location of the data, uh, the DCE connections. Now, a key thing about these DCE connections, remember that the DCE is going to be in a telco scenario. The DCE would be on the telco side of things. So the telco for the data communications equipment, the DCE, this should be the DCE interface, right? all four of those interfaces, those should be our DCE interfaces. And again, these are on the telco side. The data terminal equipment, or the DTE interfaces, those are going to be down here on the customer side, right? And there's a reason for this. And what do you think that reason is? Why is it, and DTE, and we'll get that last DTE in here. Why do you think that in the scenario that we have here, now remember, and let me be clear, when we're in class and we're working on the labs, you'll notice it'll show you the routers uh, and it'll show you the connections like this. And sometimes we're in the triangle and it'll say, you know, make this the DCE, right? Now in class, right? Or with, you know, physical routers in your lab where you're doing back-to-back -back serial connections like this, the DCE-DTE relationship is pretty much irrelevant, right? It doesn't have the same meaning and the same importance, right? And I'll put lab in a lab scenario as it does in a scenario like this, where we have a telco that's involved. Because the telco needs to be the DCE side of the connection because the DCE side and the DCE side only sets the clock rate. Now, what is the clock rate? We've seen this clock rate command, and this was Andrew had asked this question a few weeks ago uh, early on about well, you know, do we need to set the clock rate? And what if it's not the DCE side or the DTE? Or if it's the DTE side, does it make a difference? Again, in the labs, it doesn't make a difference. But in a telco scenario, and when we're talking about WAN connectivity, that's a scenario in which a telco could be involved. And the telco, and this logically makes sense, the telco is going to set the clock rate because they're going to tell the other routers, these spokes down here, we'll refer to these as spokes, and I'm going to introduce, I'm introducing this hub and spoke terminology now, because we're going to be talking about DMVPN shortly, right? So here are the spokes, and this is the hub. If the telco is the hub, the telco is going to be controlling the clock rate. 
And it's important to remember that because the clock rate is providing the synchronization. And this is when we talk about serial communications and specifically HDLC, the high-level high data link control, right? The default encapsulation. And when I say HDLC, unless I specifically call out standard HDLC, right? That IETF standardized version of HDLC. If I don't say the standard HDLC, assume I'm talking about C HDLC which is Cisco's, and it's actually called CHDLC, but I'll just say HDLC from here on out. And this is Cisco's sort of secret sauce. Now remember, a good analogy here is to remember rapid spanning tree. And Cisco looked at that and said, hey, the IETF, you've done an amazing job here. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, the IEEE, you've done an amazing job, right, standardizing um, uh, 802.1W, rapid spanning tree. And so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take it and I'm, we're going to go ahead, and this is Cisco, we're going to make it per VLAN rapid spanning tree. And it's the same thing here. HDLC was standardized. It had been around for a very long time. And Cisco said, hey, you know, we're going to go ahead, take the standard, and we're going to adapt it to how we see best fit, right? Because we see additional benefits that the general standard didn't address. And the one major change is that protocol field, I believe it's two bytes, in the HDLC packet header, right? We've got this protocol field where we can say IPv4 or IPv6, right? So it's multi-protocol. It can handle different protocols. Whereas the standardized HDLC uh, was not able to do that. So Cisco enhanced it just like they did with spanning tree, right? And just like they did with rapid spanning tree. So I should make sure I differentiate there. So it did the same thing, right? They took an already great idea, one that they at some point had been involved in, and decided to extend the functionality of that standard to better serve customers using Cisco routers that we see right here in our configuration, right, or in this topology. And so again, the clock rate synchronizes but on this link here, right, between the telco router and routers one, two, three, and four. It's set on a per interface basis, and we should see that it is set on every single interface. Now, what happens if you try to set the clock rate on the DTE side? If you try to do that and the cable is already connected, we should receive an error. And so I've got a number of routers here in my setup, and two specifically, router 8 and router 9. They have four uh, serial connections that run between them. Serial 000, 010, and let me display these here. So show IP interface brief. And there's some additional information here. And Pay no attention to all of that other stuff there. It's just some base config uh, information that I have set up for my lab. Uh, but what do we see here? We see serial 000, 01002030, right? So there are four Ethernet, uh, four Ethernet, four serial connections that run back to back between router 8 and router 9. And so there is no telco that I'm connected to here which is why the clock rate command is not really important. Again, in this scenario where it's my lab, I really don't care. I just want to make sure that I've got serial connections so that I can do demonstrations like this. So if I was to say, show controller serial 000, right? We see some information here. You see interface serial 000, right? We obviously know that. You can see the hardware specification, and we see what? That the router 8 side is the DTE, the data terminal equipment. So theoretically, we could say that if we were trying to create a scenario, that router 8 is the customer router, because that's where, or the CPE, right? That C for Charlie, P for Paul, E for Edward, CPE, that customer premise equipment. 
and that would be the DTE side. And it would be the DCE side, the telco side, and I believe in this scenario, we're going to see here that show uh, controllers, whoops, controllers, serial zero, 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 zero. We're going to see that router nine would be in a, you know, imaginary scenario, router nine would be the telco. Because router nine, and I love how they put this in the output here, there's my clock rate command. The DCE side always, always, always dictates the clock rate, right? And in a telco customer relationship on that, you know, CSU, DSU side, right, the telco side, they will be dictating what the clock rate is going to be. And it just so happens that this is a V35 serial connection. But again, it's the DCE. Here's my clock rate. If we go back to eight, what did it have here? It doesn't say anything here about clock rate, right? Because again, it's getting the clock rate. Let's go into global config, serial 000. We'll say no shut. I'll say IP address, and we'll just say 192.168.8. Well, we'll say 1.8. How about that? Make it a slash 24. And I said no shut. So it's up. We'll come over to router nine. Let's do the same thing. We'll get into global config interface serial 000. And we'll say no shut. And IP address 192.168.8. Uh, or I'm sorry, 1.9. Having some problems with my IP subnetting here. And I think, yeah, we already gave it the no shut. So do show IP interface brief. Right, I should filter that out next time it's up. Can we ping 192.168.1.8? And I've got connectivity over to the other side. Any difference in the output of do show controllers serial 000? No, no difference here, right? Still shows the clock right here. Let's check router 8 out. Do show controllers serial 000. And no, exact same thing. So we've got connectivity. The clock rate has been set. What if I try to set, oops, sorry. What if I were to try to set the, whoops, having some problems typing right now, the clock rate. Well, take a look at the different clock rates that we can choose from, right? And you can see that it gets set in bits per second. And so we come all the way up here to 8 million bits per second, right? Or 8 megabits per second. Uh, and those are the clock rates we can choose from. So let me go ahead and choose, let's choose a simple one here. We'll say 9600 baud, right? Or 9600 bits. And I hit enter, it says error. This command applies only to DCE interfaces. And the way that I've dictated this is the cable that I'm using, right? And all four cables that run between these routers are the exact same. They're these very thick green cables with a V35 uh, type connector, uh, and they dictate, and they're labeled on each end of the cable, it says DTE or DCE. And so I just made sure when I connected everything that all of the DCE ends went into router 9, and all of the DTE ends went into router 8. But again, the key takeaway is to remember, it is the DCE side that is going to dictate the clock rate, and it's the clocking that's used for synchronization. Okay, it's the clocking that gets used for synchronization. All right, so we'll drop back here. And again, we're at the telco, so let's take a look on the telco router. Let's bring it up and get our first look here at what may or may not be the issue. And again, we can see that there's definitely some problems uh, with, let's say, give it a show run. Oops, so I was going to show controllers here. So show controllers. And is it looking for the interface or serial type? So we'll do just show controllers by itself. And we should get some output here. So you can see serial 000. We've got the clock rate, and that should look very familiar. We just saw that on an actual real Cisco router. So V35, right, different hardware. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? In fact, I've got different serial interfaces on the routers that I use as well. Uh, if we go here, I've got VHWIC cards on my 1841 router. So show controllers. 
and there's the GT96K for the fast Ethernet interface, but when we come down further, specifically, and this is all kinds of output here, and here we go. You can see the hardware is GT96K IDB, right? So a little different, and it's a VHWIC card, right? You can see WIC info, shows you the physical port, and gives us additional information. So again, you should see different information for different types of serial interfaces. Now, it says reverse any cables that are incorrectly connected. Well, let's do this. If I were to say show run, serial 000, 000, 001, 010, all of these appear to be the DCE side of the connection. Now, remember, when I showed the, the clock rate command, the cable was already connected. Now, there's nothing from stopping me from going into my lab, reversing the cable, right, and making that mistake. And so when you do that, it's not that you would see uh, an error telling you, hey, you can't set the clock rate. It's that the clock rate would need to be set. It's going to be ignored on what was the DCE side, right? So let's take a look here. And because you're probably, if you're wondering, well, why aren't we seeing you know, any errors if some of these are DCE, and let's check. So let's say show controllers, and we'll narrow this down to serial 000, right? And we already looked at this, and you can see DCE clock rate is 2 million, so we're good there. And let's say show interface is serial 010, whoops. And let's see what we've got here. DCE clock rate is, is that 4 million, right? Yeah, 4 million. And then we'll come down and say 020. And actually, was it 011? And here we go, right? So the telco side of the house, we see DTE, transmit and receive clocks detected. Now, the telco side of the house should not be the DTE side of the house. And so we need to reverse that connection. It's going to be this serial 011. And so in order to confirm, right, if I were to say show runner, actually show IP interface brief, serial 010, and let me confirm real quickly that that was the one, or that's 011. So serial 011 is this 34.29. And so when we look in here at the subnets that we see, 34.29 is this connection right here. So let's confirm that real briefly here. We'll get into global config, serial 011, and I'll say shut. And we should see that far right-hand side connection, and it goes out. And that's exactly what we would anticipate. And so if I were to... Uh, come over to the connection. So we're going to reverse the connections here. So I'm going to come to the connection tab. And you'll see what happens is the routers down here, perfect, the routers change to connections. And so if I was to highlight this connection right here, because obviously we need to uh, reverse that connection. And let me go ahead and do this here first. Let's get our DCE, and uh, uh, let me cancel that. As I mouse over, right, you see how it says, so my mouse is here, but in the very, very bottom in the center of this window, it says serial DCE, and you see how that says serial DTE, and it has a picture of a clock, right? That's a little picture of a clock. So we would click on that, and we would come up here to run that connection. Now, nothing's available, right, because we have to delete that existing connection. And so if I was to highlight that connection, let's click on the X here. If I was to highlight that connection and just or actually, you know, highlight it, click on the X and then click the connection is going to delete the connection. So I'll come back down here and now there's our interface. It's open, right? Because we've just deleted or removed that serial cable. We now have serial 011 and we come down to, and I should have looked at that before, I'm going to put it in 001, and let me cross my fingers, and yeah, it's 001. So we're good. So now we've placed the right connection in there. You can see we've been given 20 points because, again, the telco side, 
always, always, always has the DCE connection so that they can, tr they can control the clocking, the clock rate, right? Okay, so we reversed any cables. Actually, let's take one last look there. You can see the interface is back up. So we'll say do show IP interface brief. I want to make sure we get all of these. Uh, we did 010, 010, do show controllers, serial 010. And that should be DCE and then 011 we just did. And now let's confirm that yes, it is DCE. And then let's get those top two real quickly. I'll make sure we get all of these. 00, zero I believe we looked at, but let's confirm DCE. We're good there. And 001 and DCE. So the telco has been sorted out. Right, we've got all of our DCE connections there, so it's good to go. Now in real network settings, the DCE, which sets the clock rate, is typically a CSU DSU. Now, a quick note on this, because this confuses a lot of students, because they read about this thing, this CSU DSU, and they wonder, where is that? What do we plug into? Well, on current Cisco cards, and I mean even on some older cards, like the cards that are in uh, my 1841s, the CSU DSU is on board, right? It's on the card. Uh, and they make it a WIC, uh, I think it's a, a T1 CSU WIC, or I can't remember the exact part number, T1 H WIC CSU or something like that. And the CSU DSU is actually built onto the card. Now, uh, I should say recently, about a year ago, I actually removed, we had a 2600 series router uh, that was a backup for a backup for a backup in, at one of our disaster recovery facilities. And they actually had a CSU DSU unit into which the router connected in order to then the CSU DSU connected to the DMARC which is that big piece of plywood that you have up against the wall for its T1 connection from Verizon. And a CSU DSU, it looked like, uh, like a small shoe box basically. Uh, and that was all that big hunk of equipment did was provided that clocking information. But now that functionality is built into uh, the, the cards that you use, right? All right, diagnose and repair incorrect port connections. So examine the addressing table to match each router port with the correct telco port. All right, well, this is going to be interesting. Hold the mouse over each wire to ensure they're connected as specified. And it's interesting because my VM, for whatever reason, when I hold it over the wire, I don't get uh, any output here. And it may just be because of the lag running the VM. So let's check this out here. We can check this rather easily on the telco side, do show IP interface brief. So 000 should be 3417, and we're good there. 001 is 3421, 00 or 010 is 3425, and 3424. So everything on the telco looks good. Let's quickly move through routers one through four. And let's go ahead and get into show IP interface brief. And so serial 000 on router one should be 3418, right? So interesting, we've right out of the gate found an issue here. So let's correct that. Let's get into global config serial 000. IP address should be 64.100.34.18. And we are a slash 30 or a dotted decimal notated subnet mask of 255, 255, 255, 252. And you can see they gave us 20 points for that. So my guess is we're going to have five issues here, 20 points a pop. So router one, we just solved that issue. Let's take a look at router two briefly here. And I guess what we're comparing is the topology diagram shows information and our information should match that information. So let's go to the CLI, get into privilege exec and show IP interface brief. And so is it 22? It is, right? So 64, 134, 22. And that is correct. And if I were to say show run, something that has dawned on me, since we're not making a change here, let's make sure that our subnet mask and dotted decimal notation is correct. 
And it is. And so everything looks good on router two. Let's jump onto router three. And I say everything looks good on router two. Before I move on, let's do this. Everything looks good from an IP perspective, but clearly not an interface perspective. So it looks like the interface is up here. Uh, but we've got this red line here, right? So with the red dots. So if I was to say uh, show IP interface brief, are we do show IP interface brief? Are we administratively down for any of these? No, we're up, down, down, up, up, down, down, down. So it's not that it's just a no shut command. So we'll work our way back to that. So back to router three, and we'll stay focused here on troubleshooting the IP addressing to make sure that it's accurate. So router three should be dot 26. Let's get into privilege exec, show IP interface brief. And it is 64.134.26. And that is correct with the addressing table as well as our diagram here. Ah, but take a look here, administratively down, right? So we can easily fix that. And my guess is that we are going to see some points for that as well. Serial 001, no shut. And it looks like something else may be wrong. So we'll move on to four, right? Still sticking with the addressing. I'm going to move this window to here. And we'll go to the CLI. Privilege exec, show IP interface brief. So we should be 64.134.30. Since we're not making a change, let's validate that we've got the right subnet mask, we do. And on this guy, in-cap PPP is set. So if the encapsulation has been changed to the point-to-point -point protocol, then it would have to match on the other side. You can also see here that we have a clock rate command configured. And this is on the CPE, right, the customer premise equipment side. And so we don't need the clock rate command. In fact, that clock rate command is not doing anything on this side. So we had that one issue with the addressing. Now, diagnose and repair ports that are shut down. So we'll start with the telco router. And actually, we just look at the telco router. Anything shut down there? No, nothing shut down here. Router 1, show IP interface brief. And we'll say do. Come back to the beginning here. Administratively shut down? No, it is not. So let's go to router two. Just to confirm, show IP interface brief. Anything administratively shut down? No, we're just down, down. And I think it was three is probably the one do show IP interface brief that was going to be administratively shut down. And now the interface is just down, down. And then here, show IP interface brief. And we're up, up. So we got the interface. It was on router three. But there's obviously additional issues with that interface. So show a brief interface summary of each router. Ensure that all of the ports that should be working are not administratively down. We did that. Now we're going to diagnose and repair the data link layer. In other words, layer two. And this is where we find HDLC. This is where we find PPP, right? Frame relay, another type of encapsulation, X25, which is referred to often, right? These are common encapsulation protocols that we find at layer two. So all of the DCE cables should be connected to the telco. Show the running configuration of the telco to verify the clock rate has been set on each interface. And I believe that we've done this already, but for good measure, do show run. Clock rate, clock rate, clock rate. So we're good there, right? So all of the clock rates have been, or the clock rates have been set on all the interfaces. Set the clock rate of any serial interface that requires it. So they're all set, so we're good to go. And now that it says that, I wonder, yeah, I believe that we are good there. Examine the encapsulation on the DCE equipment. So all of the serial interfaces should be using HDLC. So from looking at this, how can we tell that the serial interfaces are actually running HDLC? Exactly. We can tell that they're running HDLC because there is no configuration that says otherwise. And if you saw the encapsulation PPP statement, that would be a glaring you know, example of, 
hey, this is clearly not running PPP. I'm sorry, HDLC. So as we can see right here on the telco router, everything is good, right? And let me check, change the encapsulation type to HDLC for any interface that is set otherwise. And so we know that we saw one, and I think it might have been, and I can't remember now if it was router. Yeah, router four. So serial 001 on router four has in cap PPP set. So let's get into global config, serial 001. And here's a good question, right? And this is the, the truest same on real Cisco routers. So it says in cap PPP. So do I say no encapsulation PPP? right? That removes the statement. Let me pull this up. It removes the statement, but on real Cisco routers, right? And let me see if this is true. So if I get a global config, if I were to say interface serial 000, colon zero, pay note the colon is something, the colon zero, don't worry about that. It is a serial interface. If I was to say in cap and take a look at the options you've got here, right? Lots of options, but we are concerned with these two, HDLC and PPP, by and far the most popular encapsulation methods. So if I said in-cap PPP, and then I decided, oh, you know what? I don't want to run, and do you all, looks like there's a debug going here, and I don't want to run PPP on this interface. I made a mistake. We're just going to leave it as HDLC. So what could we do here? I could say, do show interface serial 000 colon zero, right? And what do we see? Encapsulation PPP, LCP request sent, we have, and that's the link control protocol. Remember that, right? So nothing is open right now. It's sending a request because the other side of this link is not configured. But we've got this encap PPP, and we say do show interface, we can see what the encapsulation is set to. If I was to change that, and I believe it is 001, yeah. So there's some more serial interfaces on here. Take a look. The encapsulation is HDLC. Now, loop back not set. And we see that, I believe we saw it up here. Yeah, loop back is not set. That doesn't mean that a loop back address is not configured on this serial interface. What this is referring to and what we'll be getting into soon in one of the subsequent videos that follows here is we'll take a look at some of that debug output and we'll talk about this little gem right here which is referred to as the magic number. Because we see this in a lot of the debug output when we're doing debug uh, PPP, we'll see the magic number. We'll see outbound configuration requests, right? Request sent. And there's a magic number associated with that. And that is what this loopback statement is all about. Right, And again, we'll dig into it later, but in short, what that magic number does is it's a randomly generated number that goes out with the configuration requests when you're running PPP to ensure that this router does not see its own magic number. If it sees its own magic number, then the loopback would be set. Because if I'm sending something out and I'm getting back PPP packets with my magic number, that packet has clearly looped back to my interface. And so that's why uh, you use that magic number. So again, show interface, serial, whatever, you can see what the encapsulation is. Now, again, that serial 000 colon 0, we've got in cap do show run interface serial 000 colon 0. We've got in-cap PPP. So if I get into, and let's make sure we're still in there, 000 colon 0. If I say no encapsulation PPP, let's see if that pulled off the command. And it did, right? In some cases in an older iOS, and this is why I wanted to check this to be sure, you used to simply just say in-cap HDLC, right? So if I had in-cap PPP on there, and that's what it looked like, I could simply say in-cap HDLC, and then it would flip it back to HDLC, right? And so, and, and again, older code, I don't remember the release, but just be aware of that uh, to double check 
to make sure that it's pulling all the PPP configuration off. So if you had, you know, PPP reliable link set, or if you had link quality monitoring, LQM set, you would want to make sure that those commands are pulled off as well to clean things up if you're transitioning back to HDLC. So uh, we took the NCAP PPP off, and again, we were awarded 20 points, and I'm pretty sure that we are going to be going back uh, to the clock rates to make sure, uh, and let's see, the clock rate is now off of that interface as well. All right, diagnose and repair the network layer. So verify the IP addressing, show a brief summary of each router, check the IP addresses against the addressing table. And so we already did that, but take a look here. So we've got 60 points and it, we're 20 points a pop. The connection between these two routers and these two routers right, the telco and router two and telco and router three, at 20 points a piece, that's probably the two that we're missing. And you can clearly see that there are issues here. So let's focus our attention on those two connections to see what the problem might be. So I'll shut router four down there. Let's bring router two up for a quick look here. So if I were to say show run on router two, let's look at serial 001. So here is serial 001, and you can see that the clock rate is set. The clock rate doesn't need to be set. It should be 22, 64, 134, 22. And that is correct, and it is a slash 30, and it's not shut down. So if I go into global config, do show IP interface brief. I don't need to be in global config to run that command, uh, but I wanted to get into global config because ultimately we're going to say serial 001. I'm going to say no clock rate. And what was it, 2 million? So it was set to 2 million. And we'll pull that clock rate command off. I'm going to shut the interface down. And let's see. No shut. Does it remove, do show run, did it remove the clock rate command? It did not remove the clock rate command. So let's see. Do show controller serial 001. And we come back up here, no serial cable attached, right? So it could be that the link is bad. It could be that it's not sensing it. We're shut down on the other side. So let's check the telco router. The telco router's connection to router 2 is serial 001 as well. So we've got a different clock rate. So the clock rate here is 4 million. The clock rate on the other side is hard-coded at 2 million. But that should not be the issue, unless Cisco's trying to be sneaky. So there's one of two ways we could go after this. And actually, if I say do show IP interface brief, do show IP interface brief, you can see that what do we see? It's just simply it's down, down, right? And then it's down, down for router three as well. And if I say do show controllers serial 001, what does it report here? So here on this side, it says DCE, and it sets the clock rate to 4 million. So let's come over to router two, and we'll go ahead. And actually, before we do that, I'm going to do this. I'm simply going to delete that. I'm wondering if this is the problem. So we're going to get the DCE side of the connection here for serial 001, and we'll drag it down to router two, serial 001, and that has fixed the problem. Uh, and what keyed me into that was the show controllers command here on router 2, where it was, pre it, not pretending, but where it was reporting that it didn't sense the cable, right? That something was wrong with the cable. Because again, the clock rate command on the DTE side is irrelevant. It counts on the DCE side. And so let's take a look, before I delete this here, let's take a look at the telco setup for do show controller serial 0010, which is our connection over to router 3. So things look good here, right? DCE, V35 connection type with the clock rate. We'll pull router 3 up, and let's start with the show run real briefly here. 
And take a look at that. This one's probably the low-hanging fruit of the group. We'll go into global config, interface, and actually, I apologize. Yeah, no, interface serial 000. And I don't believe we actually looked at this first. And we'll simply say no shut. And that is going to bring the interface back up. So again, in this packet tracer activity, we were concerned with HDLC. Some important points about HDLC, right? HDLC can perform error detection, not error recovery. And it performs the error detection with the frame check sequence, the FCS, or a cyclical redundancy check CRC, right, where it checks to make sure that the bits, everything's in order, uh, the way it's supposed to be. And if it detects an error, it doesn't recover from that error. And when we say recover, that implies that it's going to take some sort of action at layer two with HDLC to request that that frame be resent. That's recovery. And that is not what HDLC does. If HDLC, which is a bit-by-bit uh, -bit synchronous layer two encapsulation, right? What HDLC will do is it will simply discard the frame. And so that's a key distinction that I need to make, is that error detection is supported by HDLC. It'll detect the errors, and if it does, it simply drops the frame. But HDLC will not request or recover from that error that has been detected. So very, very important. And synchronous synchronous, not asynchronous communication between the two routers, or I should say between the two ends of the link. Uh, and so something else that we talked about, right, was if I was to say, uh, let's say show adjacency, hopefully that's there, it's not there. So if you were to say show adjacency, you would typically expect to see uh, a MAC address, right? So if I was to say, do show adjacency here on a real Cisco router, and adjacency detail is what I'm looking for. All right, fantastic. So you can see here, I've got some sub interfaces, right? Like kind of a router on a stick configuration. And here's fast ethernet 00.10. And buried in here somewhere, right, is the MAC address of the interface. Because when you look at this, and compare it to this, right? It's very, very close. And the MAC is buried in here somewhere. If I was to say, do show interface fast ethernet 00, right? We can see that the burned in address is 001 Fox, 001 Fox, blah, 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 32 Charlie A2. So there is the MAC address, right? And that's what we see uh, typically when we look at the adjacency statement. However, when you're dealing with serial interfaces, remember we commented, uh, let's go back to that show adjacency, and I'm gonna, ah, it won't matter which router I do it on, unfortunately. So I'll talk as, as, as this is dragging by here. Wait a minute, this may be, let me do this. We're gonna basically do this. We're gonna say adjacency detail, and I'm gonna say begin with serial. Whoops, doubled up there on the detail. And again, the serial interface isn't up. Let's come back over here to router eight. And let's say show adjacency detail and begin where you see serial. Yeah, so this is what we're looking for here, right? So you see we still have sort of like a little string down here, right? This is 0800. That's referring to IP, the protocol over here. That's the, in the protocol header, 0, 0x0800 0 0 is IP, right? And the, you'll just learn this as you go along. Um, and so I lost my thought there for a second. So I apologize. So on a point-to-point -point interface, right, you'll notice that the adjacency recognizes this is a point-to-point -point interface. But where's the MAC address? Why is there no MAC address here? In fact, if I was to say show interface serial 000, where is the MAC address? Why is there no MAC address here? And it, there's a very simple answer to this. There's no MAC address because this is a serial interface. And by definition, serial interfaces, and I've got it highlighted right there, serial interfaces are point to point. 
So we don't see a MAC address here, and we don't see one listed here as the, you know, the BIA, the burned in address, on this serial interface because it is point to point. There are only two things that exist in a point to point connection. And so on this segment, I don't need to know, like router one does not need to know the MAC address in the adjacency table for router two because he just needs to know the outgoing interface because who, how many things can be on the other side of a point-to-point -point connection? Exactly, one, right? So there can only be one other node on the other side. And if that's the outgoing interface, I don't need to know the MAC address of that recipient. I simply shove it out that serial interface because it is by definition point to point, there's no need for me to know the MAC address. I simply know the next hop outgoing interface and that is where I shove that traffic. And then it goes to the only place it can go, the other side, which is gonna be router two. All right. Well, this wraps up our first packet tracer activity of the second eight-week term, and there are some really nice packet tracer activities throughout here. So thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this has cleared up and clarified the information that we talked about in lecture on Tuesday. Enjoy the weather and the weekend, and I will see you all next Tuesday. Have a great night.